Zachariah has shown a vision of four chariots, and the angel's going to give the interpretation. So let's hear it here at Zechariah, chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. Then I turned and raised my eyes and looked, and behold, four chariots were coming from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of bronze. With the first chariot were red horses, and with the second chariot black horses, with the third chariot white horses, and with the fourth chariot dappled horses, strong steeds. Then I answered and said to the angel who talked with me, What are these, my lord? And the angel answered and said to me, These are four spirits of heaven who go out from their station before the Lord of all the earth. The one with the black horses is going to the north country, the white are going after them, and the dappled are going toward the south country. Then the strong steeds went out, eager to go, that they might walk to and fro throughout the earth. And he said, Go, walk to and fro throughout the earth. So they walked to and fro throughout the earth. And he called to me and spoke to me, saying, See, those who go toward the north country have given rest to my spirit in the north country. So this vision is kind of similar to the very first vision Zachariah had back there in chapter 1. The, uh, there were four horses there. These ones have chariots. Whereas those four horses in that first vision went out on patrol, uh, these, these are going out, and the steeds are anxious to get going. They're anxious to go and, and, and do some interventions. And you know, as as God's people come back to obedience, as God's people come back to faithfulness to him, there's going to be a lot more options, a lot of good things that can happen. And so God's patrolling the, the earth, that's going to turn into a lot of good things for earth and for everybody. So here they come with the temple pretty largely rebuilt. It's like a new day for God's people. With repentance manifesting itself, God can do just about anything. So the colors of the horses are kind of hard to match up between like that first vision and this one. And not really any particular details given, hardly in any of the colors. So I don't think it's probably not that significant since it doesn't really pertain to anything. It's uh, the red horse is always the leader. But other than that, we don't see a lot. The neat point really comes at verse 8, where it says that after God's agents go out, that they, they're, whatever they do there, it gives him rest. It gives his spirit rest in the north country. So God is out there. He's intervening here in planet Earth. He's doing stuff, and he's providentially intervening. He has angels. He has he has human agents who intervene. So it's interesting the North Country is especially mentioned, and you know, this is in the Fertile Crescent up there through Iraq, today's modern-day Iraq, and Babylon. That was all back there. So whenever the Babylon would invade, they would always come in from the north. So he says that these chariots on patrol have given his spirit rest in the North Country. And, of course, this is the relief of all that pressure from Babylon as the exile has ended, and now uh, people can return to Jerusalem. God is working providentially across the planet. He's intervening in the affairs of men. He chooses the rules by which he intervenes or, or does not intervene. The key question is always whether he has people who will team up with him and cooperate with him or not. The question is whether human agents go off into their own private agendas or team up with God's, God's plan. If they go off in their own selfish confusions, or find out what God teaches and go his way. When we choose to do our thing instead of God's thing, you know, his goals are replaced by our goals, and he can hardly work with that. We set his purposes back because he would prefer to work with us. I guess everybody's going by their own drummer, and there's a lot of people listening today to the secular drummers. But it doesn't have to be that way. We can choose God's ways. We can choose God's things. We can start with God and then be his agents in this world. Zachariah wants to see God's people come up to the line. He wants to see them doing God's things in this world. And there's an admirable goal, not only for them so long ago, but for us today. I'm pretty sure I bumped on this a few times. Going to God's Word to find out what His purpose is planned for us today, in this world today. There's where we get our marching orders. And then the key thing is to not just stand there and say, yeah, that's the plan. Instead, to march. Hope you'll march back tomorrow morning and see me then. Mm -hmm.